What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14, part one of the Al Su's Conquest. We're finally going to get into the game. All of the characters who have been requested have been made. Uh, as we see here, we've got uh, the three characters of my own, and then you guys all down here. So let's get into it. Now, I will go over the, uh, the created offices once we get there. You all seem to be in my force. I haven't seen... Oh, no, wait. I believe one of you is wandering. Um, let me uh, let me let me just bring up the uh, character sheet. Shit. Uh, I actually forgot until I said that. I actually did. I thought, yeah, they're all in mine. No, they're not. So one of you did request to not be in my force, and I remember it's a character's sister. So let's quickly Google that. That's this first part. Probably about twenty-five minutes. The rest will be between twenty to thirty minutes long. So don't you guys worry about like the content length. The length should always be a decent amount. Fingers crossed. Okay, here we go. So I believe all of the yeah, all of you guys are in my force. So that's fine. And if you guys didn't say, that means you're in my force. That's pretty much the way I've I've done this. If you don't say, you're in my force. Okay, so the only character... Okay, so let's uh, pick the date. So, the date is currently between the Dong Zhuo Coalition, uh, or the anti-Dong Zhuo Coalition, uh, where Dong Zhuo is there, and then there's a bunch of empty uh, provinces with a bunch of, you know, the cool cool characters like Sun, Juan, uh, Sun Jian, um, Cao Cao, Yuan Chao, Yuan Shu, you know, all of the... Um, Characters, some of the biggest characters that you'll know, and Ma Tang, who is in pretty much, I think Ma Tang's in like all of them. I think he's even in the latest. No, he's not in that one. I think that's the one after he was killed. Is this one where he still exists? No, I thought he was still around at that point. There we go. He's still around at the free visits. That's probably one of the hardest starts. Uh, sorry, one of the hardest starts. Uh, so yeah, but we're probably gonna do warlords. Uh, again, I haven't decided just a second. I'm going to quickly decide while I'm just looking for the rest of these. Okay. Yeah, so everyone else is starting here. So, um, so while this start could be just as much fun as there is... See, the thing is, I think this one's going to be a little less fun because there's a lot more established powers... Uh, like, every, not everyone has, like, one province. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the anti dong Zhuo Coalition. Against my own intelligent design, I'm going to pick this. And I'm going to put all of the created offices in. That includes all of the ones that were created by the game itself. And, you know, are kind of, like, tips, uh, like, nods to other uh, series uh, owned by um, Koei. So, the Aosu's... Uh, city. Now, that's the real question. Now, when I started, I did here, and it took me forever to just unite Southern Wu and Wu itself, like what would be partially Shu and partially Wu. It took the absolute, like, I'm pretty sure these, some of these, I don't know, I think this is all Wu, actually. Yeah. I conquered basically Wu, which I eventually did win, and I still haven't actually completely won that campaign, because I actually decided to stop playing, and when we, I decided I was going to do some Let's Plays. No, I don't think I want to do this one. I think I think the problem with the anti Dong Zhuo Coalition is while it's very sporadic, I don't think it's going to be as fun as the uh, Warlord scenario. So we're going to do Warlords. I think I always end up doing Warlords because it's just it's just more fun. Uh, actually, that was a little bit of a misclick right there, wasn't it, guys? All right, select all. Let's move. Let's create an original force. And I think I'm going to be weird and start in one. I'm going to put myself... Not next to, I'm going to basically try to be not next to anyone, but also put myself in a good position. Because the last time I did a scenario like this uh, was, remember to the freaking 11, Huang Zixia's campaign, I believe. And I started in Zuchang. So for now, I'm going to start in Wan. And I'm going to basically try and form a power base that resembles this before I do anything dumb. So let's go with that. Uh, we have no rank and we're going to be purple. Because I haven't played as purple yet. And I think that's a quite a nice purple color. So let's position some original officers. Um, you, 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 you. Wait. Okay, one minute. Uh, where is it? There's a there's a way of me. No, there isn't. There is not a way of me doing this other than 
looking at the thing and just to seeing what names come up. Well done, Joe. You closed something you still need. There we go. There's only one person who's not in my force, though, so it should be it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's you who's not in my force. Okay, everyone south of that is not in my force. So I have... I have quite a few officers, I believe, so the look, look. It doesn't actually tell me how many officers I have. Uh, it will do in the next screen. Okay, so let's... I'm going to put... Uh, you. As you want to be wandering, I'm going to put you in Zhu Chang. To essentially wander close. And the rest of them, I'm going to let be completely randomized. Actually, no, no. I should... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Shit. That may have been a bad idea. You. I'm going to place you down there because I don't want you close to me because you said you wanted them to be wandering. Okay. That is the start. So let's go through the initial starting factors, the enemies. But this part isn't going to be really the best part in terms of what we're going to see. It's going to be pretty much like a big setup part and then we'll go into the uh, next part where we do start doing some more stuff. So let's look at the contenders. We've got Sao Sao. So advancing... East. So let's have a look at the little... Uh, so we're going to go over all the characters, essentially, is what I'm going to say. So he's got 10 grand gold, 58 grand father supplies, and 26,000 troops. It's a decent amount of troops and a decent amount of supplies. Currently has no rank. He's got active 33 officers, though, whereas we've got 11. So yeah, he's going to find himself very quickly expanding. But advancing east would be difficult battle, but advancing to the west would be easy. So... Advancing here is easy. Advancing here is going to be hard for him, but we'll see. We've got, we've got Liu Bei, whose everything starts from surviving. Who is he is in a very bad position, having himself surrounded on all sides by vastly superior forces for the most part. As Liu Bei in this time had established himself, but not fully established himself. Like he was. And he's pretty much running low on officers and just genuinely, generally not really in a good position himself. Um, but he's got a bit of gold, decent supplies, and some, you know, middling troop count. We've then got Sun Tse, who is currently in a better position, but... And having much better officers, he's lacking troops and supplies and gold. Like, he's lacking... The key foundings. He's got the men. He's got the. He's got the amazing officers to you know back him up, but he doesn't have anything else. So it's going to be very interesting to see if Sun Tzu can actually make his way out of this scenario. Like if this was historical, of course he would. Um, and you know he does have the officers to beat you in a field battle, but it's it's whether or not he has the strength to overcome whatever Yuan Shao and others confront. Sorry, Yuan Shu and whatever others confront him. We've then got Yuan Shao, who starts in a very respectable position, owning three cities and, you know, currently flush with cash, troops, and supplies. Uh, he also starts as regional governor, so he also has a, a officer that he can choose to enact stratagems with, instead of, you know, just allowing it to chance. But he also has a very respectable 45 officers, which is going to really see him show off early on, which is exactly what he really wants to do. You, he really wants to get rid of Gongsun Zan, Gongsun Du, and Zhang Liang? Zhang Yang, sorry. Zhang Liang. That's a completely different person. My bad. Uh, I've just been reading up about Yellow Turbans, and Zhang Liang is a Yellow Turban. My bad. But he is very... He's in a very good position, and he is very much not really... He's going to be one of the biggest challenges, and I'm looking forward to that challenge very much so. He was the biggest challenge in my own personal playthrough, and I started on the date before this when he started from one province. So giving him three provinces to start is going to be very interesting. Because if we, if, if Sao Sao doesn't rise to match him, we are going to have to rise to match him. The good thing is, crossing that river could give you a lot of time to prepare troops to stop them. Or to prepare your counter-offensive. But he does start with very good officers, and... He starts with a lot of them, so R11 is going to be very, very, very hard to catch up to his 45, but it's doable. All we have to do is take out a few, like, a few of our rivals, like Sao Sao, Lu Bu, Lu, uh, Lu Bei, and if we're able to quickly grab up those officers and keep them loyal, we will be able to take out Yuan Shao without any issue. We've then got Yuan Shao's little brother, 
Yuan Shi. Oh no, is he older brother? I never remember if he's his cousin or brother. I'm pretty sure he's a brother, but I can't remember if he's younger or older. We've got Yuan Shu, the pretender emperor, who starts with, again, a very respectable position. One of the strongest on the map, again. Um, he starts with two cities, but he does start with very, very poor officers. Like, if we look at his retainers, their abilities are middling at best. Like, he starts... I don't think he starts with any really good officers. Like, the strongest strength, the strongest leadership is Jingling. Uh, Jiling, which is... That's very middling. I, he has very good, but he doesn't have very good back-end stats, which is a shame. But again, he does start with regional government, a governor, so he can act, enact... So he has some more control over his uh, stratagems and um, stuff he can do on the battlefield, so he can somewhat... If he's a, if he's, if he's he's uh, playing smart, he can somewhat turn situations to his, you know, to his will. We've then got Li Ju who is currently the Grand Minister and the highest ranked man in the game, and also the strongest as he contains the Emperor. However, he doesn't really have many officers and really any gold supplies. Like, that 16 grand gold's not that much in the long term. That gold could be spent in a few turns, especially if I'm playing. I can spend that gold very quickly. But he does start with two Cs, and this, the, he does start with the privilege of being Grand Minister, which means he has a lot more control over the battlefield straight away, which is going to be very interesting to see what he does with that. His, his officers-wise, though, like... He does have some decent troops. Like, he does have some high-end stats for each. So, you know, hopefully he'll prove to be a threat, because we do. We will share a gate that I'm going to try and capture straight away. But hopefully... He leaves us alone, because I don't really want to fight Li Ju just yet, because that would give me the Emperor and make, paint a symbol on my back pretty quickly. We've then got... Among men, Lu Bu, and among horses, red hair. The warrior of undefeatable qualities, Lu Bu, who starts with a very reasonable 21 active officers, a lot of which used to be Dong Zhuo's uh, lackeys, uh, but they are some of the better Dong Zhuo lackeys, like we've got Zhang Liao, Gao Shun, uh, Wei Shu, and we you know again just some good officers. And he's also got uh, Chen Gong, uh, Dao Shan, and stuff like that for um, and Zhang Miao. So he's got very respectable, higher end stats uh, for his officers. But he also starts with twenty one of them and a single city. So while not thirty three, and uh, you know, you know, while not Cao Cao's thirty three, he's in a good position to sh stay strong and do good. Um, he just needs to keep that gold and supplies up because supplies are very, very easily used early on. We've then got Li, Li, uh, Lu Biao, um, who is start again as a lieutenant governor. So he's a little bit higher rank and again has a little bit more control over his um, battlefield etiquette, like, you know, battlefield strategies. I'm pretty sure it's regional governor you get your first, and lieutenant governor is the se is the one below regional governor, or is it the same? can't remember. I'll have to look into that. I, I believe that I'm pretty sure it's regional governor that you get your first control. It might not be. I might be wrong. It might be lieutenant governor, which means what I've said about Yuan Xiao and Yuan Shu is a little bit wrong, but we'll see. But he starts with 25 officers. I believe they're all decent. Uh, again, that's, yeah, they're middling stats. Some of them are atrocious, but he has what he has at his disposal, but he has a completely uncontrolled, unlike he could just go south or west, or even a little bit north and take the, one of the provinces I want with relative impunity. I don't think I won't. I know I won't be able to fight him off very easily. So he does have that uh, going for him, and he has a respectable amount of gold supplies and troops. Like he has a lot more troops than I have. So like I start. This is one thing I find funny. Created off forces always start really weak, which is really fun. We've then got Gong Sun who again starts as the regional governor. He's got two Cs, but he has a very, very low officer count. And I believe in this time period... No, he still has Zhao Yun, but Zhao Yun is very likely to leave him for uh, Liu Bei. But he, his real threat is that he just needs to expand, get rid of Gong Sun Du, and then focus Yuan Shao down. And he starts with a very respectable amount of troops. He just does not start with the officer count that uh, Yuan Shao starts with. Or really the gold or supply count. So he's very much... He just needs to really hope he can hold off. There's not much more to say. We've then got Ma Tang. Who again is in the same position as Gong Sun Zan. Or Gong Chuen Zan. Whatever you want to say. 
Uh, he starts in it. He starts with a good rank, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, I believe that's higher than Regional Governor. I think Regional Governor would be higher. I don't remember. So he, he either has the ability to control stratagems or he doesn't. I don't remember. Uh, but he has a very low officer count and a very low troop and supply and gold count. So he's again, he's in the same position as Gong Tun Zan. He's not exactly a potential, he's a potential threat, but he's not currently a threat to his nearest uh, enemy. And whether or not he becomes one is very much remaining to be seen. We've then got Lu Zhang, who is going to probably just establish herself completely in Shu and be left alone and then never expand because out trying to get out of Shu is just as hard as trying to get into Shu. So he's probably going to be very well established, uh, very hard to knock out, but probably not be knocked out because he's unable to get out of there himself. And he's just going to waste all of his troops on the borders, probably against Lu Biao and uh, Zhang Lu. But he does start with a, not a very high count of officers and again, m very low troops, gold supplies. But he does have very good growth potential. And honestly, he's probably one of the easiest. He's probably the easiest, if not... After some of the four, like after Shizhi, we've then got Zhang sure. Lu, who is exactly on the border of Lu Zhang, and he has again a lot of these forces. You'll notice they're very weak, very lacking, and just it's it's some of like some of the really like they just they don't even have good troops. But he is in a position where he has really like if he tries to go south, it's very slow to take the city there. It's going to be near impossible for him to move down to it. And if he wanted to go south or not, like he has nowhere to expand. And so he's pretty much just going to be a, he's going to be a sitting duck, but he's going to be very hard to attack himself. We've got Gong Sun Du who, yeah, he's in a very, again, the same position as Zhang Lu, but a little bit harder because he's really at the edge. Like he has nowhere to expand other than for Gong Sun Zan. And he doesn't have the officers, all the troops, all the supplies to do so. Like he is very, very much unable to do anything what you then got Tao Qian or Tao Quan as I call him but he's now, his actual name is Tao Qian who has he's in one of the worst positions however historically he doesn't last much longer anyway so in a few years he will be dying he should die and there should be an event for him to be taken over by Lubia, Lubei and it, it shows with the active officers and the amount of troops and supplies yes he doesn't really have anything now, I do apologize. This part has been a little bit longer than I expected. I, um, but it's pretty much, I like to do a good setup. I, I feel like that's a very good thing. I'm, I'll try to make this one a half an hour video, but it may upload a bit late. Um, we've then got Kong Rong, who is, again, he has two officers. He, he doesn't even have Tai Shi, Tai Shi Shi, I believe it's pronounced. Because I believe Tai Shi Shi is now with, he's now with Sao Sao, isn't he? No, 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 no. Sun Sir. 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 He's red. Sun Sir. He's the way. He's not. Is Taishi C Lu Bei? Lu Bu? I don't see why he'd go to Lu Bu. Is Taishi C dead? Huh. I don't know where he is. Either way, he's currently not under he's not under the Kong Rong, who likes everything. He is in a bad position. If he expands, that'll truly be a beautiful sight to behold. And I hope he survives. Fingers crossed, but I, I it's not gonna happen. We've then got Zhang Yang who again He finds himself in the same position as the last couple. Lack of troops, lack of everything, and he's just in a bad position and wedged between greater powers. Same as Wang Liang, who Wang Liang, who has probably the best offer chance out of uh, the next couple of officers we're going to talk about to expand into Wu. He has a few more officers, and that's really all he has. Sure. Yan Ba, who again, same verse, say se second verse, same as the first, unfortunately, with for him. He's just, he's, he's not in a good position. He's in a very bad place and he's just not got a much chance. What's your dollar? Liu Yao, though, he starts with a rank. He starts with the troops, starts with supplies, starts with some gold. Not, uh, a lot more than his uh, enemy. He doesn't have the officer's potential that, uh, oh, he's the one who has Tai Shishi. Tai Shishi. So there. He does have a good officer when it comes to battle. It's just whether or not he can stop Sun Tzu from crossing that, uh, from crossing the, I think this is the Yangtze, with the top one being the yellow. I do not know. 
I'm not good with the river, so I do apologize. I will look it up before my next part. But he's in a position to do something. Now, the one force that's going to be very interesting is she, she is whether or not he's actually going to expand or do anything. He has no one around him. He has very few officers for two cities. Like, he doesn't have enough officers for the two cities he does have. It's going to be very hard for him to grow and expand reliably. He doesn't have the troops, doesn't have the supplies, doesn't have the gold, but he does have time. And then we've got us, who has enough officers for what we need to do. We're going to be spread thin very quickly. But if we're able to take out some enemy forces, we can take out those officers and, you know, bolster our own forces. There's also probably a good 30 officers in the wind who can be chosen, picked up by anyone. But if we go quickly by forces... Okay, regional governor is better than lieutenant. So regional governors are the guys who are going to start with some uh, um, stratagems. I don't think lieutenant governors will. Gold-wise, it's Yuan Shao. Like, we're not even on the top 10. Like, we're one of the lowest to the bottom. Supplies, it's going to be the same verse. The troops, yeah, we are just below. Like, we're we're on Tao Quan, or Tao Qian levels of difficulties. Office account, Ken, we're low down. It's like, we're not, we're really not, you know, in a good position right now. But we're going to do the damn best we can. Now... Auto historic events. Uh, we're going to be playing on normal because hard is actually a little bit more pain in the ass. And you'll notice a lot of these are all uh, DLC locked. It's a little bit annoying. But to be honest, I wouldn't turn, change any of that. I would not change any of this either. So it's... Honestly, it's fine because I wouldn't change them. It's just a shame I can't have extreme because I did want to try, but I'm going to keep leave this on normal for the first time we play it as like a let's play. Uh, we could go down a few soldiers healed, but I don't really want to be that much of a dick to the AIs because it's going to affect me just as much as it affects them. And this only makes it easier for the stronger powers to have like to be doing what they want. Change the exec to shoot permission for sanction command suggestion. Uh, yeah, we'll just leave that as it is. Zas is normal. Kale in action, normal. Lifespan. We're going to go historical. Female officers, present, and free officer origin. We're going to go his fictional, because if we go historical, it's going to be very painful for us. So let's do it. So yeah, there's 32 original officers just around. Let's go. Mindre 诸侯各怀私心开始了权力斗争在河北袁绍夺取冀州稳固了势力增强了自己对战幽州公孙赞的实力在中原曹操收编了青州黄巾军实力大增但在徐州之战时遭遇突袭被吕布夺走了兖州清平元年战乱愈演愈烈。They call my late father Sun Jian, the tiger of Jiangdong, and what am I doing with my life? Unable to even succeed my father, will I just end up being an underling of Yuan Shu for the rest of my life? Sun Tzu, please do not be so hard on yourself. Oh, Zhu Zhi, I'm embarrassed you had to see me like this. No, I'm glad I learned you felt this way. 
Sun Tzu, what do you think about borrowing some soldiers from Yuan Shu and raising your own army? Yuan Shu has ambitions for the Imperial Throne. I'm sure he would gladly lend you the soldiers if you put the Imperial, sea of, Imperial Seal of Yung Yuo Yun, uh, up for collateral. Borrow soldiers by putting the Imperial Seal of Yung Yuo up for collateral? I see. Yes, now this is the time for decisions. Let's bring this to Yuan Shu tomorrow. Yuan Shu was hesitant at first when Sun Tzu requested his independence, but his option, opinion changed when he saw the Imperial Seal of Yong'o. Yuan Shu sorry, took the Imperial Seal and immediately gave his support to Sun Tzu, and the episode began a new chapter of Sun Tzu's life. It all worked out. Now there's nothing tying me down. Yes, all that's left to do is forge ahead. Hmm, who is that coming from over there? Sir. Oh, you. I heard you claimed your independence. I've been waiting for this moment. I shall join you. This is the beginning of our era. We shall claim Xiang Dong first, and then the world. Ah, Zhao Yu, you're gonna be in my force whether you fucking like it or not, you little bitch. Ah, Liao Su, I've been waiting for you. Before we begin to carry out our strategy, let me explain our army's objectives. Our goal is unification of this land. That is the reward that awaits the last foe standing. The land we have conquered is... Like this, our territory is represented on the map through colours. We can expand our conquered territory by moving our... Uh, by moving our units, by improving our country through domestic affairs, and while sending out our soldiers to a nearby core would be a good start. Then give me the orders. So... The first thing we're going to have to do is uh, immediately make sure you guys are loyal. Because a lot of you guys don't look don't look to be happy to, with me. And then, we're going to automatically select our, um, our administration. Now, I would put you guys in places, but I still do not understand this mechanic. So, the warlord will just be the smartest. I normally make it my character's wife, Chen, uh, Chen Hua. Um... But you guys are all going to get put in where you, where you guys belong. Now, if I look, I don't think, yeah, there's only, yeah, you're all in. I got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, there's a couple of you who are not. And that's because I don't have the space for you at the moment because you're a domestic officers. However, so let's have a look who got what. So Chu Li... You currently, you have got uh, the position of my warlord. Congratulations! You are effectively my second in command, and the, the second, like the leader of my army, beside me. We then have got um, Bai Feng, uh, who is currently the le my only battle administrator. We then have got Ben Ashilavi, Li Jun, and Asano Kinkishi as my um, support uh, uh, support ministers. We've then got my wife as my domestic minister, and Tao Pan and Abat Lavi Hana as my um, personnel administrators. So let's initiate that. Yes, my liege. I wholeheartedly accept my appointment as warlord. So, at the moment, as you can see, this is our position, and we're not going to be able to do much now. So we're just going to—I'm going to leave it off here. And we're going to do everything else in the next part. As you can see, this is where we see who owns the most of China at the moment: Zhu Lu Zhang. And then Lu, Ji, uh, Lu Zhang, and then Li Ju, and then Shi Zi own the most of the land. Um, whereas we are currently there. No, 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 no. We're a dark. We were there, I think, actually. Yeah, that's us there. Because we own a big one of the bigger promises. But unfortunately, this is where we're going to have to end this part. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of Robert the Three Kings 14. Do, if you, if you did, please do give it a like and share it. I. I don't like to ask for this, but it really does help the channel. And I'm, as I'm trying to rebuild this channel from where I left it, I kind of just ran it into the ground because I stopped caring. I'm trying to start caring again. I'm, I really do care about this channel, my streaming and stuff like that. And hopefully, in 2022, we're going to be bringing streams to YouTube. I don't know how possible that's going to be yet. We'll have to see what it's like. Um, and basically, it just depends on the turnout. But we'll see. But um, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, please do give us a like, please do, uh, you know, follow YouTube, follow Twitch, join the Discord, all the links down below, and I'll see you guys in the next part. I hope you guys all have a great 2022. It's the first of the year month. I did push this back one day just for that. So happy new year, everyone, and have a good fucking day. See you guys in the next one.